it is an interesting question. What if you came here to play? How many times do you have a conscious moment throughout the day where you just simply ask yourself, what am I doing here? And not just here, as in the coffee shop or your mother-in-law's house. I mean, you know why you're there. You have an answer to that. It's usually not a great one, but you have that answer. But this is a question that we wrestle with all the time. Why are we here? Why are we even here? The great existential question of them all. And I posit to you today that we are simply here to play. And this takes on every conceivable manifestation you can imagine. And the way that I've been able to distill it, and the way I'm going to describe it today, is our soul's journey through this adventure down here on Earth can be distilled into one simple experience, which is basically a trip to Vegas. Now, I want all of your great Vegas stories afterwards in the Q&A. And when I say great Vegas stories, I mean the things that you cannot discuss in mixed polite company. But the beauty of this gathering today is that it's not polite company. So we can say whatever we want. It's raw. It's uncut. Dennis, thank you, sir. Appreciate you. <laughs> and the essence of our entire journey here is going to be understood this way. So what I want to do is walk you through my own journey and how it mirrored essentially a trip to Vegas. And then I would love to hear your experiences about how you can tap into that, how this essence of play speaks to your life. At what point did you forget that you were here to play? And at what point did you remember that you were here to play. So let's boil it down to the very beginning. We first start out in a vibration way up here. I'm talking way up here. I'm talking the penthouse vibration, baby. I'm talking, we're going really, 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 really fast. We're way up here. We're vibrating in the highest, highest, highest densities that exist. And we're just vibrating. We're just having a great time. We're having a great time. We're in the most blissful, beautiful, incredible place you can possibly imagine. Some of you call it Cleveland whatever you want to call it, it's fine. But we're just vibrating and doing our thing. But we look all the way down here and see something very interesting. We see a much, much slower vibration. We call it planet Earth. And some people call it planet Vegas. So if you're way back home in Cleveland, you look all the way out there, you say there's an interesting, glimmering place out in the middle of nowhere, way out in the desert, separated from everything. But it looks so fascinating. And there's nothing like it in all of creation. It's such a unique, interesting experience. And I could watch YouTube channels on it. I could listen to people talk about it who got back from there. I can hear my brother-in-law's tale about how he lost his mortgage out there and now he has to move in with me and that's gonna be an experience. But I can hear about it, but it's not the same as experiencing it. Your soul decides, you know what? I'm going to experience it because there's nothing like quite being there. And I'm going down there to play because that's the kind of town you can play unlike anywhere else in the cosmos. There's nothing else like it. So I said, all right, your soul makes a decision. Here, we're gonna go. We're making this happen. We're going out there. We are going down to planet Vegas, baby. So the first thing you do, you book that flight, you get on Spirit Airlines and you choose Spirit because you just got your jujitsu black belt so you're ready for whatever comes at you at 35,000 feet. That's the place. It's like, let's go. It's showtime. You get on that spirit flight. And you finally start descending in. You start seeing it. You start seeing the valley. You start seeing the casinos. You start seeing the Hoover Dam. You see the lights. You see all of it. And you realize, I am going to be in for the adventure of a lifetime. Because there's nowhere else that I can play quite like this place. Everything I heard about it tells me that it's one of a kind, but now I'm going to experience it for myself. So this is the energy that your soul brings into life. This energy of there's nothing like this anywhere else. I'm going to play. I'm going to experience this. And what a story I'm going to have when I get home. All right. So that's fun. That energy is great. And that takes you into it. So you finally land. Like, all right, here we go. It's showtime, baby. Let's rock and roll. Let's dig in. Let's enjoy this. Let's experience this. Your soul gets off that plane. You pop out of the womb. You start crying hysterically because the Mets lost again. What are you going to do? And the doctor gives you a slap because that's a great way to come into the world. You get assaulted immediately. You show up and you get assaulted and you're crying. Like this is a great way to just begin this entire experience. And you get off the plane 
and you're now in Planet Vegas. And the first thing you do is you go to your baggage claim. You go to the baggage claim at Harry Reid Airport because that's what we do when we're born. We collect our baggage. And what's the baggage? The country you're born in, the name you're given, the belief system you're given, the zeitgeist that you're born into, the passport that you're given, the family members that you're going to have. This is the baggage. And it's waiting for you at the carousel. Like, all right, well, this journey is going to begin when I pick up this baggage and it will be my companion throughout this journey. This is what ultimately will clothe me. This is what's going to give me those Advil pills when I really need them. And it's Vegas because you're going to really need them. So you're just ready to roll. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. You still have that energy of let's play. You're ready. But immediately something happens. Immediately. As soon as you get to the airport, because you flew spirit, maybe they lost your baggage. Maybe somebody took your baggage. Maybe you took somebody else's suitcase. There's always some kind of a snafu right out of the gate. And that, that's that birth trauma. There's always a little something that happens that starts to nestle its way into your, into your cellular DNA, into your, your cellular memory, and it sticks with you. And it's the first experience you have of, well, wait a second. I thought this was just going to be a big playground. I thought this was just going to be fun. I thought this was going to be light. I thought we we're just going to be vibrating up here, all the way down here. Then you realize when you get down here, Things vibrate a little bit slower. Things are a little bit heavier. Things are a little denser. Things are a little more difficult. They're not quite what you're used to. And they're not quite what you remember. So that first thing nestles its way in. But you're like, all right, we're still here to play. We're still here to have a good time. Let's do it. So what happens next? You become a toddler. And you make your first stop on the Vegas tour. And you find yourself in the beautiful, spectacular Grand Luxor. And I was just there, let me tell you, they just recently renovated that place. And when I say recently renovated, I mean 1996. But <laughs> you show up to the Luxor and you're like, all right, I'm going to check in now. I'm going to begin this adventure. You're, you're a toddler. You're wide-eyed. You're excited. Everything looks amazing. And like a good toddler, you just want to run around and turn every single wall into a canvas that you're going to paint on. You're going to throw stuff. Oh, what's that over there? You can't eat that. I don't care. Whatever it is, you're just like, everything is fun. And in your toddler state, you're in the most pure expression of why you came here, which is this is miraculous. Everything here is utterly miraculous. I cannot believe that I'm taking this in. And that's what somebody who first shows up to the Luxor thinks. If they've never been to Vegas before, you show up to the Luxor and you see this big giant pyramid. That's a casino. It's a hotel. And the elevators go sideways. It's incredible. They go like diagonally. It's like that Willy Wonka elevator at the end of the movie. It goes this way, it goes that way, it goes that way. You've never been in an elevator like this. Nobody has. It's amazing. And you have this beam, this beam that shoots up. And it goes all the way into space. And you can see the beam from space. The first time visitor looks at this and is just utterly taken in by the miracle of what this is. The same way a toddler just looks around and takes in the miracle of what this is, how incredible this is, and understands intuitively, this shouldn't even be here. None of this should even be here. This is a big playground in the middle of an utterly inhospitable desert. And yet here it is. And people are coming from all over the world to have a great time in the middle of this utterly inhospitable desert. And look what we've turned it into. And we built a giant pyramid here with a beam that can be seen from space and elevators that go this way. And as a toddler, you have that. But this starts to happen in the toddlerhood. You start to see constraints start showing up. And the playful spirit starts to get boxed in just a little bit, just a little bit. It's still mostly fun. But now you start seeing little things show up. Maybe you're at the Luxor, you booked a suite to have an all-day tailgate before the game over at Allegiant, and you booked it for 11 a.m., the game starts at 3, and the room's not ready until 3. I'm not speaking from very recent experience or anything. And suddenly you have a resort fee they slap on you for 45 bucks a night. You're like, wait a second, I didn't sign up for this. It's not even a resort. What are we talking about? Parking for 25 bucks a night? All these things start coming at you. 
and your resting state of play, which is, I just want to experience everything and have fun and just have a good time, starts to get boxed in a little bit by these unexpected dense things that start coming your way and start pulling you down a little bit. And as a toddler, this happens in our lives. You start seeing these rules. Well, you can't eat that. Well, why not? Well, you just can't. Well, I want to say that. And you, you know, the kids who repeat what their parents say in public, funniest thing in the world, by the way, but the parents say, you can't do that. You're going to embarrass us. So you can't say that and you can't eat that and you can't touch that and you can't go there and you can't associate with them. And you, and all these little boxes start to form and the playful spirit. That's great. Starts to get shrunken down just a little bit. Now, the fun part is you're still a toddler. You're still young. It's still day one in Vegas. You're still deluxe or you're still having a great time. But you start getting boxed in a little bit. Then day two comes around. You go into your childhood. Now you're at the Excalibur and you're still having a great time. You go a little further up the strip. The goal is to get to the Bellagio. That's the goal. You want to get to the Bellagio. So the next place you go to get there is the Excalibur. This is really cool too. And now you're looking around saying, wow, okay, I've got King Arthur's sword in this rock over here and a bunch of restaurants that charge me $28 for a slice of pizza. What could possibly be better than this? This is really fun. But then other things start to happen too that just box you in a little bit more. You start getting more and more rules. You start getting more and more regulations and you start collecting experiences that slow down that vibration that bring you further into the Vegas game to the point now where you start to take Vegas a little seriously, a little seriously. You're a kid in school and suddenly this playful thing gets turned into an obligation. Now, this is the first time you've ever experienced this. You don't even know what this is, an obligation. You say, ooh, ninth, okay, I'm nine years old. I'm in third grade and I'm being taught math. Math is fun. This is great. Numbers. I get to play with numbers. Who wouldn't want to just play with numbers? I could just do that and do that and do that. But they tell you, you don't get to play with numbers. You have to learn the numbers and then tell us what you learned on something called a test. Well, what do you mean a, a test? What are, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. You can't just play with numbers. You can't just have fun. You have to learn them and then regurgitate it back to us. You have to let us know what you learned. So now you're taking this really, really high vibration and you're slowing it down even more and contracting it even more. And this playful spirit that we came in with is slowing down gradually, step by step by step by step. Now we're taking the trauma from the birth and now we're taking the rules from toddlerhood and now we're taking the test and all these things are starting to come together to slow down that playful spirit and bring us into a place where now we're starting to take Vegas a little seriously. Now we're at the Excalibur saying, well, wait a second now. I, I came here just to play. I came here to show up. I came here just to, to talk to the tourists that are coming in from all over the world. I came here to play a $10 table, but now the table minimum is 25. Now gambling has to be a serious thing because if I start losing at the $25 table, I'm gonna get cleaned out and this trip's gonna be over. So that happens at the Excalibur. And then your next stop on the tour are your teenage years. This is where the fun really begins. Then you go to the New York, New York. Now, I love the New York, New York. I was just there. They got a brand new wing at the New York, New York. It's called the Staten Island Wing. Yeah, the rooms are paid by the hour. It's great. Yeah, the first day I was there, the housekeeping staff came by and dumped garbage in the room. But anyway, <laughs> I can say that some of my best friends have escaped from Staten Island. So... Staten Island wing at the New York, New York. It's fun. It's a, it's a fun property and it's a great property to show what your teenage years are because there's a lot of fun that you can have. And some of that spirit starts to get restless. Now you get this restless playfulness. It's not like your earlier playfulness that you showed up with where everything is just a big show. It's just a big game. It's just a big dream. Now it's no, 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 no. I, we got, listen, we got to get to that bar on time. We got to get to that show. We got to get to that party. We got to get to that table. We got to get to this. And I'm locked in and I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And notice the shift that happens from, I want to do this to, I've got to do this. I've got to get into that college. I've got to get these grades. I've got to make my parents happy. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. Complete shift from, I want to, I want to, I want to. 
Then we move on to the Cosmo. Let me tell you, the Cosmo is fun, baby. The Cosmo is a great time. The Cosmo is your 20s. The Cosmo is glitzy and it's glamorous. And that's where you can really let loose and have some fun. And you're thinking, okay, now I have finally rediscovered the spirit of what this all means, of why I came here to play. Because you have the chandelier bar, which is gorgeous. And you have all these cool things that are happening. And now you feel like you've made it. But the problem is, while you're at the Cosmo, you're taking the game really seriously now. Now you're putting on your Sunday best. Now you're looking really sharp. Now you're putting on your best shoes and your best outfit. You're trying to attract people. You're trying to do your thing. You're thinking, okay, okay, I got to really, really make it, make it play tonight. I've got to. I got to look good. I got to sound good. I got to be good. And that person at the Cosmo who's looking to impress people, who's looking to make some money at the tables, who's just looking to be the big person in town is totally disconnected from that person who first got off the plane and went to the Luxor and looked around, realizing this is just a miracle. This is just incredible. You're no longer looking around the Cosmo thinking, this is a miracle, this is incredible. You're thinking, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to get to the Bellagio. That's where I've got to go. And guess what? You finally get to the Bellagio. You get in your 30s, you get in your 40s, you make it to the Bellagio. Congratulations, you finally got there. You've achieved the brass ring. You've achieved the thing everybody in Vegas said you need to achieve, which is to get the suite overlooking the fountains. You got the job. You got the spouse. You got the kids. You got the house. You got the title. You got all the things. Congratulations. You made it. And now you're more miserable than ever. You are totally and utterly disconnected from that kid who showed up to the Luxor and thought that elevator going that way was the absolute coolest thing they ever saw in their entire life. And now you're looking over to those Bellagio fountains and all you can think to yourself is, well, you know, they have a water shortage out here in the desert. Should, should they really be doing that? And then, you know, you go downstairs and you want to have one of these wonderful breakfasts at one of their great Italian cafes. And all you can think is this coffee is good, but maybe $12 for a coffee. I mean, really, is that what we're doing here? $12 for a coffee and, you know, my suite, maybe I should have taken a black light. I don't know who was here before. I don't know what's happening. And Oh God, we got you know, you know, wait three hours for a dinner reservation to eat at 8:30. I mean, we were supposed to eat earlier than that. And I, and what was a miracle and is a miracle now becomes an obligation and now becomes something you got sucked into. The real magic of the game, the real magic happens when you take one step back, one step back from your suite in the Bellagio. You look outside of that window, you look over on those fountains, say, wow. I am in the entertainment capital of the world in the middle of an inhospitable desert. And I'm looking at a water music and light show that should be impossible. And yet it's happening and I am here to be a part of it. And I'm sharing this hotel with thousands of people from around the world who have the most incredible stories who I can chat up over breakfast or over dinner or at a table learn their stories, they can learn mine. Our vibrations can get light again. They can get happy again. They can get playful again by intersecting with each other. And as they do that, we can rediscover who we really are, why we really came here, and what this Vegas adventure is truly, truly all about. Thank you.